So section 2.1 is covering trig functions on acute angles. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to talk about um, the values of the six trig functions. We're going to focus in on the first quadrant uh, of angles, okay, so anything between 0 and 90 degrees. A um, couple of reasons for that, these are the most basic angles, um, and we don't have to worry about uh, determining whether the function is positive or negative. If you recall from chapter one, uh, we talked about this diagram uh, where we had all trig functions are positive in the first quadrant. The sine is positive in the second quadrant. The tangent is positive in the third quadrant, and the cosine is positive in the fourth quadrant. The other, um, the other two trig functions are all negative in those other three quadrants. So here in the second quadrant, tangent and cosine are negative. Here the sine and cosine are negative, and here the sine and tangent are negative. Okay, But in the first quadrant, where all of our acute angles are, all of the trig functions are positive. And so we don't really have to worry about the sine of the function. Um, as we move through chapter two, we'll deal more with angles in the second, third, and fourth quadrants, and we'll have to um, you know, work with the negatives um, and converting angles, uh, thinking about angles uh, um, you know, so that they're not, so that we're, we're not just dealing with larger angles, but we want to deal with smaller angles, okay? So that's why we're going to focus on acute angles here in this first section. Um, and so triangles are, uh, acute triangles are kind of nice because all three angles are acute. We also, I also want to point out that, uh, the Pythagorean theorem, just one more time. Remember that in any triangle, the sum of the squares of the two legs is equal to the square of the hypotenuse, okay? So we're gonna utilize that quite a bit um, in this section. So let's say we had a right triangle, and for instance, I have maybe um, two side lengths of uh, eight and six, okay? And I want to find all of the trig function values for, let's say, we'll call this angle A uh, down here on the lower left, okay? And maybe I'll throw angle B and angle C in there just so I can give them some names, okay? So if I wanted to find all six trig functions for angle A, well, the obvious one, the easiest one is the tangent right now because if you'll recall, Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent is opposite over adjacent. Well, we have the opposite and the adjacent side for angle A, all right? So the tangent of angle A is equal to opposite over adjacent, which is six over eight. And of course, with any fraction, we want to reduce that down to three-fourths. Okay, so the tangent of A is three-fourths. Um, the cotangent, then, is going to be the reciprocal of that, if you remember from uh, chapter one. The cotangent of A would be the reciprocal of three-fourths, which is four-thirds. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, so then let's take a look at the sine, cosine, cosecant, and secant. Um, unfortunately, for those four functions, I have to have the hypotenuse, uh, and I don't know the hypotenuse now, so that's where Pythagorean theorem is going to come in. If I don't know one of the sides of the right triangle, I need to utilize Pythagorean theorem. And so here I'm going to call this side little c, since I've got big C in the opposite corner. And so... Um, Pythagorean theorem says basically that the, the sum of the squares of the two legs, so that would be 6 squared plus 8 squared, is going to equal the square of the hypotenuse, which is c squared. So we solve for c. This is uh, 36 plus 64. 36 and 64 makes 100. 
And of course, to solve for C, we take the square root of both sides and we end up with uh, C equaling 10. Now, of course, um, technically when we'd be solving an equation like this, we'd want to use a positive or negative 10 uh, when we do the square root. However, the, uh, we're only looking for positive values when we're looking for the hypotenuse. So uh, positive 10 would be our answer. Now, I didn't put any units on these. I'm not concerned right now about units, um, whether they're inches or meters or whatever. Um, we'll just keep it uh, unitless, I suppose, right now. So if C is 10, the hypotenuse, then I can create the other four trig functions. So we'll, let's start with sine. The sine of A is opposite over hypotenuse, that's 6 over 10. And of course, 6 over 10, we reduce that down to 3 fifths. Uh, the cosecant is the reciprocal, right? CSC is the reciprocal of the sine. So we take 3 fifths, flip it upside down, it's 5 thirds. Um, and then we have the cosine. The cosine from our Sokotoa is adjacent over hypotenuse. So we do a over 10, or 8 over 10, sorry. And of course, 8 over 10 reduces down to 4 fifths. Uh, if the cosine then is 4 fifths, the secant is its reciprocal. And the secant then would be 5 fourths. So that gives us all six trig functions for angle A, all right? Now, what's interesting is if I focus in on angle B, um, I'm gonna get the same six values, but for different functions. Uh, so let's take a look at that. Let's, um, I'm actually gonna highlight angle B in red here, write it in red. And then we'll go through the list of the six functions for that now that I have all three sides. So if I wanted to come up with the tangent, oops, I did my eraser, there it is. Tangent for angle B. Um, tangent of B, well, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So that's eight over six, which is four thirds. Notice that the tangent of B is the same as the cotangent of A. Okay. Now when I flip the tangent to create the cotangent of B, I end up with 3 fourths, which was the tangent of A. Kind of interesting. Uh, also, let's look at the sine of B. Well, the sine of B, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So from B, the opposite side is 8, the hypotenuse is 10. So the 8 tenths, which of course reduces to 4 fifths. Um, and then the, the uh, cosecant is the reciprocal of that, which would be uh, 5 fourths. Okay. Then we look at the cosine. And we know the cosine of B is adjacent over hypotenuse. So I'm looking at B, here's adjacent is six over 10, which reduces to three fifths. And the secant, which is the reciprocal of the cosine would then be five thirds, okay? So there's our list um, for angle B, all right? Now, the, uh, in this triangle, we're, we're dealing specifically with acute angles. Um, this is not an acute triangle. I mentioned that earlier. It's actually a right triangle, but the two angles other than C are acute angles. Um, we're not going to deal too much with the uh, trig functions on the 90 degree angle right now. We'll, we'll deal with that another time. Um, you can do uh, trig functions of 90 degree angles, but I'm not too worried about that, but if you think about this, there's, there was a theorem in the previous chapter that dealt with the angles of a triangle, the fact that the sum of the three angles is always 180, right? So we know 
that the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B plus the measure of angle C is always 180 degrees. Well, if I know that angle C is a right angle, then this is 90. If I subtract that 90 off both sides, I know that the sum of the other two angles must be the other 90 degrees. Okay, So that essentially means that in any right triangle, the two non-right angles are uh, complementary. Right? They have to add up to 90 degrees. So in all right triangles, A and B are complementary. Or whatever, whatever the angles that are not right angles are. Right? So they're going to add up to 90. So measure angle A, measure angle B equals 90 degrees. All right? Okay, so what's interesting now is that uh, when you look at sine of A and the cosine of B, these are two uh, uh, complementary angles, right? A and B. And the sine of one angle is three fifths, the cosine of the other is three fifths. What's interesting is that the sine of an angle is always equal to the cosine of its complement. Okay, and you can also see here the cosine of A, which is 4 fifths, is equal to the sine of B, which is 4 fifths. Okay? That'll always happen uh, based upon the way that this is designed. Okay? So, as a general principle, um, and I'm going to use the same labeling here of A and B. So I'd say that um, in, the tri in a right triangle, um, the sine of A is equal to the cosine of B when A and B are complementary. I guess I spelled that right, uh, complementary. And so, because angle B is really 90 minus A, if I were to solve this equation for B, um, I really have this expression that the sine of A is equal to the cosine of 90 minus A, right? Because angle B is really 90 minus A. It's the remaining, uh, it's the remaining degrees when you subtract the A angle off of 90, okay? Um, and so this gives us a new relationship between two angles. Okay, um, there are similar relationships between trig functions and um, complementary angles. Uh, they can be found uh, in your textbook in this section. They're called the co-function identities. So I'm going to write a few of these up here. Okay, so the cofunction identities can be found in your textbook. Uh, there are six of them. And so uh, basically the relationship you want to see is that the, a trig function in one angle, for one angle, is equal to the co-function in the other angle. So let's take a look at this, identify these relationships. The tangent of A, 3 fourths, is equal to the cotangent of B, 3 fourths. Okay? So the tangent in one angle is equal to the cotangent of its complement. Also, the cotangent of the angle is equal to the tangent of its complement, right? They're both four-thirds. The sine of an angle, which is three-fifths, is equal to the cosine of its complement, also three-fifths. The cosecant of five-thirds is, or cosecant of A is five-thirds. The secant of B is five-thirds, right? So secant and cosecant are going to be 
um, uh, related to each other, they're equal to each other. The cosine of A should be equal to the sine of B, right? The sine of its complement, and so four fifths, four fifths. The secant of A should be equal to the cosecant of B, five fourths, five fourths, okay? So all those relationships are gonna be true. So I'll just write a couple of them up here. There's six of them again. Um, basically, one of them is you could switch the sine and the cosine here. So the sine of an angle is equal to the cosine of its complement. Also, you could think of the cosine of an angle being equal to the sine of its complement. Okay, so these are gonna be interchangeable. Um, the secant of an angle is equal to the cosecant of its complement, and so forth, okay? And so I could continue this process, the tangent and the cotangent. And so the reason they're called the co-function identities, the word co, or the, the prefix co there, is because each trig function is equal to the co-function of its complement, okay? Um, and that's gonna hold true for any uh, right triangle.